now without any further delay, it is my uh, great pleasure and honor uh, to welcome Professor Heinz Ludwig, who is really a master in the field of multiple myeloma, and I always learn a lot from you, Heinz. And you're going to discuss how to understand pain in early uh, stage multiple myeloma. The floor is yours. So thank you very much, uh, Mohammed. After your eloquent uh, uh, introduction, I am uh, pleased and honored to talk about uh, pain in early myeloma, but not only in early myeloma, uh, but uh, during the later course of the disease as well. So these are the, uh, it is too fast and sorry for that. I try to go back. It's not, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these, thank you. These, these are the objectives. I will talk about pain, uh, the frequency of pain, uh, the major sites, uh, uh, anatomical sites uh, of pain in myeloma patients. Uh, I will uh, talk about the importance of so-called PROMS, patient-reported outcome measures. Um, and uh, I will also talk about the impact of pain in patients with myeloma and the impact of pain on their quality of life and uh, only briefly because that is covered later uh, on uh, pharmacological and non-pharmacological approaches for pain treatment. I move forward. So this is, yeah. So um, uh, patients with myeloma um, experience pain and actually pain is the most frequent uh, symptom at presentation of the disease about 70% of patients at diagnosis report about uh, bone pain, and uh, about 80 to 90% of our patients have uh, osteolytic or uh, other bone lesions at presentation, and this number is increasing with uh, uh, further cause of the disease. So bone pain is due to bone fractures, spinal cord uh, compression, um, and there are other symptoms which are well known, fatigue and weakness, infections. Um, some patients present with kidney uh, impairment, uh, some of them with acute renal impairment. Uh, weight loss is not so frequent. Night sweats usually occur um, when patients suffer from infections. And of course, there uh, may be symptoms from surplus of proteins, uh, such as hyperviscosity syndrome. Now, when I move forward, uh, I find it difficult to move these slides forward. Maybe, uh, yeah, the, I, I just ask you to move the slides forward. Uh, this slide shows you the um, uh, main sites or, uh, uh, for bone lesion in myeloma. And the main site actually is the spine. Uh, followed, 60% uh, of patients have uh, lesions, uh, uh, bone lesions in the spine, followed by pelvis, 35%, as you see, skull but skull lesions usually do not cause uh, pain. And then patients may have rib, rib fractures, also quite frequent, 35% of patients. And then uh, less frequent, you may, may find lesions in long bones, humeri and femora. So the clinical, yes. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, neuropathic pain is uh, usually the consequence of uh, myeloma therapy, but it can also be the con consequence of, for instance, herpes, uh, 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 virus reactivation as shown on the left side. This is a patient of mine who had been treated uh, with bortezomib and panobinostat and was prophylacted with acyclovir. In spite of that, he developed uh, ocular herpes uh, zoster, which was quite painful for him for a long, for several months. On the left of this slide, you see a bone marrow bi bi biopsy specimen and here you understand, you see in, in uh, brown uh, uh, nerve fibers, and here you understand why uh, myeloma infiltration in the bone may cause bone pain without even osteolytic lesion, because there may be um, uh, inflammatory cytokines which are uh, produced, overproduced, and irritate uh, the uh, small nerve fibers and cause pain. And bortezomib is one of the culprits of uh, neuropathy, uh, I will show you a slide about this uh, um, impact, the impact of uh, potassium. 
Um, now, other causes for uh, neuropathic pain are nerve compression, uh, tri trigeminal neuralgia, uh, joint pain is nothing special for myeloma, and there may be uh, paraproteins like IgM paraproteins, which uh, react with uh, myelin associated globin, and that may be may cause neuropathy and also painful neuropathy. Please move forward the slides. I try to move it forward myself. Uh, challenges uh, for caregiver and for patients are optimal uh, communication. Optimal communication is key, but uh, when you look at the um, 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 real world uh, practice, you see that there is a discordance between the uh, pain which is sensed by patients and uh, the pain of the in, uh, intensity uh, which is recognized by the care team. First of all, some patients may uh, be reluctant to admit pain because they want to please uh, their physician. They have, a, I think, I don't know, a mindset which is no longer appropriate. So they want to protect their physician and say that they, I'm relatively doing well, uh, although they are suffering from pain. And so pain is uh, um, under-recorded by physicians and uh, uh, usually underestimated by about 50% of the physicians. And so uh, the, the consequence of that is that patients don't receive adequate or a fraction of patients does not, do not receive adequate pain medication. Now I move on with my slides. I press my mouse, but yes. And this is a study we uh, did with uh, bortezomib based therapy. And you see here the cycles of chemotherapy. And in blue, you see uh, the uh, pain grading, uh, uh, which was made by the caregivers. And in red, uh, the grading uh, by the patients themselves. And what you see when it comes to grade one and two polyneuropathy, um, at least at the end of the study, there was no big difference between patient and caregivers. In the beginning, yes, patients sensed uh, more frequently pain, pain as was assessed by the caregivers. But when it came to severe pain, namely grade three and grade four polyneuropathy, you see a significant discrepancy. Uh, we as caregivers fail to, uh, to uh, acknowledge the severe pain felt by several patients. You see here the discrepancy between the red columns and the blue columns. Red are the patients blue. Are the, um, the caregivers. I again try to move forward with my mouse. And uh, so one of the most, uh, I think, effective instruments for assessing pain uh, and its impact uh, on, on patients are so-called uh, patient-reported outcome measures. So they allow the patients to report uh, their symptoms and um, ideally they can uh, connect with their care center uh, let's say, um, in real time, and uh, the, uh, I will show you a, a, a slide how it may function, and that gives the patient the opportunity to communicate all their symptoms and give the um, a care center the opportunity uh, to um, figure out whether the patient has uh, uh, some symptoms which uh, um, um, urgent, which uh, 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 need urgent interaction. So, uh, uh, and we have seen that these um, um, prompts are really helpful, and there are studies in uh, solid cancer patients that they may even improve uh, not only the well being of our patients, not only the care, but also the outcome. I try to move on the slide with my mouse. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, a pain scale, which is uh, most frequently used, I think. Uh, maybe our uh, co distinguished colleagues will discuss that as well, and we have time for discussion. That is the EORTC quality of life, Q20, the myeloma subscale. And you see here, question 31 uh, to uh, 36 are devoted to pain, and the patient rates his pain and can all, has also the opportunity uh, to indicate the site of pain. Uh, so this is what we do in clinical studies in, uh, on a daily basis. I try to move forward again. 
uh, and I show you a patient of uh, uh, our clinic. Um, and that is uh, what we hand out to our patient. That is a pain scale. It goes from zero to 10. And uh, here we have a patient uh, who, when he uh, uh, woke up, uh, had already pain. But then when he left his bed and uh, tried to walk around, he had severe pain. So his treatment was intensified. He received morphine and uh, uh, diclofenac olanzapine. Then the pain improved and um, got better. But in the afternoon, uh, the pain worsened again. And then he took a sleeping pill and had a good rest, uh, uh, fortunately. But when he awoke again, he had pain. Uh, I'm just as an example of pain measurement in clinical practice. Now, when I try to move on, Mike, thanks. Uh, this slide shows you um, just a, a small selection of PROMS of patient reported outcome measures. Uh, this one has been developed in UK, um, uh, includes certain items, but actually you can um, construct, you can um, develop your own PROM. And there is something which is very helpful, which has been produced by the National Cancer Institute. Uh, it's a tool book, book, box, which comprises 124 items. And you can select the items for your um, center-specific PROM which you consider important together with your patients. Uh, PROMs are developed together with the input of patients, and then you can use that. Uh, NONA is a commercial one. I show you how it works, and there are other uh, PROMs uh, as shown here. Now, when we move forward with the slides, please, then uh, it's quite easy. The patient uses either his uh, or her mobile phone or tablet or uh, laptop. Um, and enters all uh, the symptoms and grades uh, his or her symptoms. And this is immediately uh, transferred to the care center. And in an ideal world, next slide, please, uh, you see uh, how it works. So the patient um, uh, develops symptoms. Um, he um, uses his uh, smartphone and uh, enters uh, the symptoms and the uh, intensity of symptoms. Uh, uh, and then next slide, the symptoms, uh, this is transferred to the server of the care center. And next slide, uh, ideally the care center has an algorithm which distinguishes different types of, uh, let's say, urgency. If it's an urgent uh, problem, if the patient has severe fever, uh, there is a red alert and the care team is immediately alerted to intervene. So this helps to reduce the time from sepsis to uh, actual antibiotic treatment, for instance. Or if the patient has hypercalcemia, develops, um, um, I think, somnolence and so on, uh, th then his uh, caretaker at home can use this prom and alert the clinic uh, 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 from Monday to Sunday, uh, day and night. And that is very helpful. So let's move on, please, with the slides. Yes, so the benefits are uh, uh, really significant because they uh, using PROMS improve the, uh, and facilitate the communication between patients and care caregivers. And what we know from the clinical practice, when uh, patients are using these PROMS and, uh, and interacting with their care center, this leads to a reduction in visits to the emergency departments, reduce hospital admi admissions, results in better quality of life, and it gives patients a feel of empowerment, which is very important. And in lung cancer, as mentioned before, it has already been shown that uh, in stage four, stage three patients with lung cancer, it may even improve over a survival because the care center can intervene in case of urgencies. And of course, it's very helpful for clinical studies because you have a complete documentation of the patient's symptoms during the entire uh, course of the uh, clinical study. Next slide, please. Yeah, the problem with pain and uh, other symptoms is, and that is a slide from uh, uh, from uh, from Dr. Engelhardt. Uh, when you look at uh, quality of life, uh, this is global quality of life. And when you look at the pain item, you see uh, in first line, pain is uh, relatively well controlled. But with every uh, new uh, relapse, 
it will become becomes more difficult to control pain sufficiently. And in the next slide shows you a study of our group where we looked at uh, the quality of life in patients with relapsed refractory myeloma. And when you look at pain of in green, the green um, bars uh, denote the uh, quality of life items uh, which we found in our patients. And the blue bars denote the uh, quality of life uh, of an age-matched uh, large uh, patient population. You see the difference. Patients with myeloma have a reduction in uh, global uh, health status, physical functioning, role functioning, fatigue, of course, is uh, prominent, and pain is a very important one. Something is uh, which is shown in green. Many patients have uh, the ability to adapt to this hardship uh, and do emotionally quite well. Also, um, emotional function is also worse in patients. You have to know that uh, uh, in the upper scales, uh, a, a, higher, um, a higher bar denotes a worse function, and uh, in the lower scales, a, a lower bar de, uh, denotes a worse function of the quality of life items. Let's move forward, please. Uh, and this is another study we did, and this shows you uh, that pain alone has an impact or is associated with impairment uh, of several items of quality of life, overall health-related quality of life, physical functioning, social functioning, emotional functioning, work productivity and activity impairment, role function in fatigue. So if the patient is in pain, you can uh, assume that all the other items which I just mentioned are, are suboptimal. So the patient is really uh, severe pain, of course, is something which... Uh, uh, impacts on uh, uh, several items of quality of life. Let's move on. Yeah, please move on. Move on with the slide. Yes, we have here, so which pain treatment is available? We can use local pain treatment, very, uh, so uh, uh, surgical fixation, as you show here, uh, the fracture of the humerus, uh, the patient is pain-free after the procedure. If there is a localized uh, lesion in the vert in one, of the vertebra, you can use vertebroplasty. You uh, install uh, cement into the uh, vertebral body and the vein is gone immediately after the procedure. You can even try to uh, uh, do, uh, do again, to increase the height of the vertebral body by in inflating uh, uh, being, uh, cement and uh, that uh, not only improves pain immediately, but can also increase the height of the column and you can, of course, use local radiotherapy because myeloma is sensitive to radiotherapy. So localized uh, radiotherapy is, of course, quite active. Let's move on. Please, yeah. Uh, uh, this will be discussed in greater detail by uh, my colleagues uh, during the presentation. So this is a famous WHO pain ladder. So you start with... Uh, uh, simple pain medication, and you end up with morphines and um, and uh, and adjuvants. Uh, so I move through this topic uh, quite fast due to time constraints. Next, please. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so uh, generally, you start with uh, 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 non-opioid drugs. Uh, you have to consider the ceiling effect of non-steroidal anti uh, anti inflammatory drugs, use, uh, as mentioned, lowest dose, which is effective. And then you have to titrate. If this is not effective, you use adjuvants uh, like um, neuroleptics, corticosteroids, antidepressants, muscle relent, uh, relaxants. And then if that is not working, you have to move to opioids like tramadol and to morphine later on. So let's move on, please. Please, please move on. Yes, and uh, treatment of neuropathic pain is a difficult issue because uh, the, all the treatment which is available is uh, uh, ameliorating uh, neuropathic pain, but uh, not to the extent we would like to achieve. Uh, the, I think the most uh, uh, frequent drugs which and effective drugs are, of course, anticonvulsive drugs like pregabalin, which in my opinion is the treatment of choice, but you can use antidepressant in addition. Amitriptyline 
has been, of course, even approved for pain treatment of neuropath for treatment of neuropathic pain, but treatment of neuropathic pain due to diabetes. It's also working in a myeloma, and you can use topical treatments, uh, which are uh, uh, maybe um, um, psychologically important. Uh, but uh, I think uh, this will not solve the problem because neuropathic pain usually um, um, uh, is not localized uh, uh, to just a single small lesion. Uh, it, of course, you have it in the lower legs and the feet and so on. So next slide, please. This brings me already to my end. Uh, uh, I think we all agree pain is uh, the most frequent symptom of patients with multiple myeloma at diagnosis. And um, it is even more frequent uh, at relapse and late relapse. Bone lesions are the major cause of pain. Other frequent causes of pain are uh, neuropathic pain, polyneuropathy, uh, due to treatment, uh, potassomib, uh, but also a neuropa uh, no neuropathic pain due to reactivation of herpes virus. Pain is associated with a reduction in the quality of life. Uh, therefore, pain therapy is a priority of uh, um, supportive care of management of, of our patients. And next slide, and that is the last one. Next slide, please. Next one, there should be a next. Uh, a pain should be assessed by patients, no question, using uh, uh, instruments, uh, for instance, the EOTC instrument uh, or the pain scale. A patient reported uh, outcome measures are uh, probably the way to go in the future and will be moved, uh, will be used more and more. And pain treatment depends on the cause of pain, includes a broad spectrum of interventions such as local therapy, pain medication, adjuvants, and uh, um, strong pain uh, therapies like morphine. With that saying, I would like uh, to stop here and thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much.